All right, here we go. Time to get Anthony some video on here. If I can remember how to do this. Let's see here, Anthony Servideo. There you he is. Hey. <laughs> Still got the beautiful hair going. Hey, so you know. Yes, sir. Repping the shirt, but not only me. Hammer's got it too. No, he does not. Oh. Hammer's got the shirt on as well. It looks so much better on him than it does on you. It does. It does. Uh, Hammer, bedtime. Hammer's mom's going to come get him. Good night, buddy. Uh, he got to step a few minutes late to show you his new shirt. Nice. I love it. I can't believe you got him one. Yeah. I can't I believe you been, got one. Uh, what's that? I can't believe you got one. Yeah, we'll get we'll get into that. Uh, we'll get into that here in a little bit. But uh, right. my wife basically made me get it. Hmm. Uh, but I do like the, I do like my sons. Uh, he will never have the blonde hair though. Never. Uh, uh, Unless he's a shortstop for Ole Miss, then yeah, he will have. Yeah, we're hair. gonna have at, at that at that point we're gonna have to have a serious conversation. <laughs> um, okay, a couple things. Uh, we're gonna go through this. I'm gonna ask you some questions. I got a hard time from your double play partner Peyton Chatnier that yeah. I, ask, I ask the same questions every week. So I'm assuming Peyton's on here. Uh, we had a team meeting, uh, what was it, yesterday? Team yes. Zoom meeting? Mm -hmm. And uh, some of your teammates gave me a list of questions. Uh, okay. some, of them, some of them appropriate to ask while there's 255 people on here, some of them not. So I'm um, using my discretion on which ones to ask and which ones we won't ask. Okay. You Sounds good with good. that? How yeah. uh, how are things in Jupiter, Florida? Things are good. Um, I'm bored out of my mind, but staying safe, of course. Uh, the fam is safe, and uh, a lot of <clears throat> Netflix, Fortnite, and uh, sleep. I think I told TK this, but did you know that I have never logged on to Netflix in my life? Really? Yeah. You should. It's a game changer. I think so. I think when so. you do, let me know. I'll uh, I'll recommend some shows. Okay, all right. No golf, John Rice. All golf courses are closed. It's just yeah. ignorant. Sh staying off them. Um, all right. So people that are on here, uh, as well as teammates, uh, fire away mm -hmm. questions. I'm not great with technology, but we'll try to read at the bottom. Uh, we'll try to scroll through them, and and uh, if there's some solid questions. Uh, we'll 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 go with them. Uh, okay. A couple things. I think we have to start with the normal question. Um, and I think I can have a little more insight on this than I did with, well, for sure with Errol, because I didn't recruit him. Uh, okay. But even maybe a little more than TK, only because uh, I think Laugh was probably the first person to see TK play. Mm -hmm. I was definitely the first person to see you play. So let's yes. go through um, you getting recruited. Um, just take us through basically high school the recruitment process, how you remember it, and committing to Ole Miss, and then we'll stop there. Okay. Um, recruitment started sophomore year of high school for me. Um, started off with some small schools in Florida. Um, I remember College of Charleston was also interested. Um, and then went out and played my sophomore summer. After that summer is when Coach Lafferty first called me. Um that was after the Scorps camp, right? That you saw me at? Yeah. 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 So Coach Laugh <clears throat> called me then. Um, first big school that had I had talked to. And so really pumped about it, really nervous. I remember I was sitting at the dinner table with my parents. I get a call and uh, don't have the number. And, uh, you know, at that time, you got to start answering phone numbers that you don't have. You know, you never know who it could be. I walk outside. <clears throat> And uh, Coach Laugh, and uh, we talked for like 30 minutes. And I remember I was so nervous to talk to him. My heart was beating so fast. I was pacing but here's, back. But here's the thing with Coach Laugh. Uh, for those of you who don't know, 
uh, you can be really nervous because when you talk to Coach Laugh on the phone, you don't have to talk that much. Mm -hmm. He is That's going true. to do most of the talking. Yeah. And yeah. then once you All get right. to know him, once you get to know him, you never have to be nervous around him ever. That's that's a fact. All right, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go on. All right. So talked to you guys, set up an unofficial visit, came up and visited. Um, my first unofficial visit, and so I was I was pumped about it. And um, so backtrack a little bit. My dream school was to go to Florida State and play baseball there. You know, I honestly didn't even really know about Ole Miss until Coach Laugh had called me, and um, I don't know if you knew that or not. But, uh, yeah, my dream was to play at Florida State. And, um, anyways, go up, visit, fall in love with the place like everyone does, you know, who visits there. And um, we're leaving in the car and we're driving to the airport. And my parents are asking me, like, what I thought, all that kind of stuff. And I was like, you know, like, that place is awesome. I love it. But, you know, I want to wait a little bit. You know, I'm still waiting for Florida State, blah, blah, blah. And my dad and mom were so mad at me that I had said that. Um, they wanted me to commit so bad when we were, uh, right when we left and, um, ended up flying home and I called coach B right when I got home from the unofficial visit. And I said, Hey, you know, this is where I want to go. And obviously, you know, it ended up working out for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll give it to you from, uh, from my standpoint. So I come down and to Scorps camp, um, here is, here is the tough part about that camp. There are 300 kids there. There are no numbers on anybody's back. Mm -hmm. And so you guys are all pretty young. I think Elko is at that camp too. Yep. And uh, Was Spears there or no? I don't think Spears was there. Um, what about Jimbo? The only ones I remember were you and Elko um, because neither one of you guys were committed. Mm -hmm. uh, Spears may have been by then. I can't remember. Anyway. Um, there's no, there's no numbers on, on anybody's back. You guys are mm -hmm. all wearing purple shirts, no numbers on anybody's back. So as a recruiter, that's really, really bad. Right. So like, that's tough. you don't know who anybody is. So you, somebody, you have to stand out like physically. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so you guys did the pro workout and then broke up into like six or seven games. Mm -hmm. So you did not have blonde hair then. Although you did have like bushy hair coming out the back of your hat and yep. you were wearing your, your socks up. Mm -hmm. And so that was my only identifying marks on you to continue to watch you. Anyway, long story. I came back and told coach laugh, uh, Hey, there is this kid there from Jupiter. And so people know, like, uh, we don't recruit your area very much. We have a ton of Florida guys, right. Mm -hmm. In the history of last 10 or 12 years, a ton of Florida guys, but, definitely not south florida guys and especially not southeast florida guys right so jupiter mm -hmm. is on uh, on the coast and very few guys that way but that doesn't have anything to do with anything you're a good player um and so i tell i tell <laughs> coach laugh and he's like all right come on how good is he because last tied in with uh, your organization and uh i said he's brandon crawford so uh you had a lot to live up to anyway laugh calls you the ne the rest is history you guys come up for for a visit all of that mm -hmm. stuff. Um, one huge compliment that, that, that you got, um, and I don't know if I've ever even told you this. I think maybe I have. Um, before uh, before you showed up at Ole Miss from an opposing coach in the SEC, I think it's okay if I say his name, Kevin O'Sullivan, right? So the head coach at Florida. Yep. You are already committed to us, mm -hmm. and uh, you're playing in Fort Myers. And I don't have a game to go to, so I'm going to go watch you play. You go single over the shortstop's head, and I just happen to be uh, standing next to uh, Sully. Sully. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure he's not on here. Uh, he is not the most outgoing guy in the world. Um, I would agree. Very successful. Obviously, yeah. uh, he's coach. had a ton of really success, and he's got enough players. I'm sure you got a lot of buddies on his team. But he mm -hmm. looks over at me after you go single, and he says to me something to the effect of, Hey, you guys need to stay out of Florida. Uh, and so I, I took that as a huge compliment, not only for you, uh, uh -huh. but obviously for Laugh, who had got, who's gotten so many good players from the state of Florida. But obviously he thought you were a really good player. I don't know if that's the first time he'd seen you play or not. Um, mm. But he, uh, he gave you a huge compliment there. Um, okay. So now let's roll. No one cares about the recruiting process. But we had to get that out of the way. Yeah. Um, 
we're getting a ton of questions, some really good questions from some of your teammates on here. Uh, also, oh. some questions from some people I don't know that are good. A lot of Major League Baseball draft questions, which we'll get to uh, here in a little bit. Um, boy, Plum don't, whatever you say, don't say Plumley's question. Okay. He is relentless in asking yeah. questions. And if there's I one thing I know about John Rice Plumley, um, he is not going to stop. Uh, anyway, uh, I think he's supposed to be like throwing a football or something. All right. Um, let's go to your freshman year. So we're obviously very, very good. And I think uh, as coaches, uh, I'm going to give you a compliment here. As coaches, I think we use the term like this guy is soft or this guy is really tough. Mm -hmm. But I think, I think those statements are hard to quantify. So I think as coaches, they're easy to say. So mm -hmm. Like, hey, I can't coach really toughness, and I can't coach out of softness. He's just a soft guy, like um, and it's hard to and it's hard to define those things. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 2018, uh, we have a really good team. Obviously, your freshman year, yep. and we're going to get to some specific uh, stories <laughs> about 2018 because I think that's the best thing about this is okay. anybody could interview you. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a relationship, and I know some inside stories, so that makes it a little more fun. Yeah. Um, back to the toughness. Uh, you come in. Obviously, Gray is playing shortstop. Um, we have Jacob Adams as a middle infielder. We have you. <laughs> and so it's basically you three. Uh, Gray's going to play shortstop. Um, and you and Adams kind of go, well, not kind of. You go back and forth, like, game by game to start mm -hmm. the year. Adams plays really well and basically gets the job. Yeah. And so here is a really talented guy in you. Um, you have a guy that's a grade older than you playing shortstop, which is your natural position. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think you would mind me saying this. I think some people and so, even some people that you're super close with um, after that 2018 season where you didn't play probably as much as you wanted to um, would have been OK with you leaving. And I think the, the normal thing in college baseball and college athletics is, and I think it's what people around here that know you really respect, would be, hey, I'm going to go to junior college, I can get drafted, or I can go to junior college and sign somewhere else and go mm -hmm. play shortstop for a couple of years. Um, yeah. And I think some people probably even encourage you to do that. And I know I, rem I even remember that summer you calling me and saying some junior college coaches had called you. And so yeah. – uh, I say all of that to say, I think that's what toughness is. You knowing, hey, not only did I not play shortstop this year, I'm not playing shortstop again next year probably uh, because Gray's going to. But mm -hmm. I made a commitment there, and I'm going to stick it out. Um, and I think that's pretty sweet. Um, and I think you got rewarded this year um, for a lot of hard work and that, um, mm -hmm. sticking it out. And I think uh, you really got rewarded for that. So, anyway, enough with the – kissy face uh i love you and all that stuff um another another really funny uh well i told a story about coach b yelling at errol last week um and i don't know if coach b well i know he didn't yell at you in this in this scenario as bad as he yelled at errol in the other scenario but uh, i remember one instance in your freshman year so adams is playing a lot we're winning a lot mm -hmm. and uh for those of you who know Ant, he is all about flair, right? So I think even the tweet um, that I made fun of said something about the guy with the most swag in college baseball is going to be on. Well, the swag has always been there. The swag was there when we were recruiting him. Uh, the swag was there when you were a freshman. And so mm -hmm. what I'm talking about when it comes to swag is like uh, TV tape, obviously the arm tattoos, sleeve. Arm, uh, sleeve. arm sleeve, um, I can't go pants up because I wear my pants up. Yeah, uh, and I I started doing that late. I didn't do that my freshman year. Right, um, and so I got one for you. eye black yeah. sometimes. Eye black, eye black. Mm -hmm. eye black. Yeah, maybe you and Oli, maybe a little eye black smear down the side. Did you ever do yeah. that? Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. Once okay, so um, I'm sure you're frustrated as a freshman. Uh, always were a good teammate. I don't want to give anybody the wrong impression, but probably mm -hmm. frustrated that you weren't playing as much. I mean, that's sure. the bottom line. And so all of a sudden, the tape on the wrist <laughs> isn't on there anymore. The arm sleeve come out for BP, no arm sleeve, no eye black. Um, 
And so Coach B, um, who is anti-swag, I think we can all say that, he would call it cool guy. Um, he's anti-cool guy. Uh, pulls you into his office one day and is like, hey, where's all the swag? Mm-hmm. Uh, which I never thought I would hear out of out of Coach B's mouth. But yeah. did t- tell the story because I obviously wasn't in the office. Didn't did he not call you in and say what happened to all your swag? No, he definitely did. Um, I I remember you know every time I get a notification from Coach B, it's just it can't be good. Um, no, I'm just kidding, not all the time. But yeah, I did get called into his office and I sat on the couches right across from him, and he was telling me he said what's going on. And I said, nothing. I mean, I'm I'm all good. Everything's good. And he's like, I noticed you weren't wearing tape, no arm sleeves, all that stuff. He's, I mean, I don't think he used the term swag, but he he was asking where it was, and and I honestly didn't have an answer for him. Um, and just all of a sudden, I just stopped stopped wearing that stuff, and he noticed it. I did not think he was going to, but he made sure that I knew he noticed it, and that game I, I the tape was back on and the arm sleeve was back on and that was the end of it he, okay. he uh he used the he told me the reasoning was because you know he thought I wasn't ready to play which is understandable because I uh, I didn't I guess dress as myself and that's kind of how I play but yeah that's how it went yeah good story um okay let's stick with your freshman year Again, I think we've spelled out the the background of it. Um, this is the 2018 season, um, which we rolled. We won the West, so we are the number two seed in the SEC tournament. I, I can't remember who won the league, Vandy or Florida. And uh, so we have a bye, and we roll through the SEC tournament. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. we go um, we go to the championship game. We're playing LSU. Uh, Kessinger is leading off, goes base hit up the middle. I don't know if Gray's on here, but it was like a six hop ground ball up the middle, not, not squared up. We would not call that a quab. Nope. Um, but anyway, I digress. Uh, and so who's hitting second? Who hit second for us? Olenek? Oli. Yeah, I think it was Oli. Okay. So let's just say it's Oli. Hits the ball as hard as Oli can hit a ball, lines out to center field. Mm-hmm. And... Gray appears to not even run. Like, he just gets caught out in no man's land and gets doubled off, which you should never do. Um, And so he comes off the field. Well, he pulls his hamstring. Um, And so he's out of the game. And I give Coach a ton of credit because I think the – the natural thing to do you this keep in mind at this point you haven't played consistently for i don't know six weeks eight weeks a couple months months. yeah and so we're in the sec title game in hoover and there's like thirteen thousand people there maybe the best college baseball atmosphere i've ever been a part of because it was Mm -hmm. split right down the middle obviously lsu has a great fan base half of it was purple half of it was red and blue it's sweet and so immediately uh, I think the natural thing in my mind was, all right, let's move Adams over to shortstop because he's been playing. Mm-hmm. He gets, he, you know, he's in rhythm and put Ann at second base. And coach immediately puts you in at shortstop. And I watched this game at the beginning of the quarantine because they played it on the SEC network. And Chris Burke, um, who obviously was a All-American infielder at Tennessee, is doing the, the color commentary on the game. You – play incredible uh mm-hmm. so take us through uh you make an unbelievable sliding backhand play um throw over to zebo i think you had two hits one bunt hit and, and mm-hmm. another hit but take us through um take us through that Great okay. first. take us yeah. through that game it's been a while since you've played mindset all of that mm-hmm. so i'm i'm sitting in the dugout you know with my arms up on the thing watching the game and I see Gray pull up as he as he's going back to sec, uh, first base when he gets doubled off, and um, you know obviously that's when that's when my mind starts going. I start telling myself, all right, you know, like there's a chance I go in here. Like if Gray can't can't do it, and uh, to just be ready. And I think Gray goes back out for the second inning. He plays the top of the second, doesn't get a ball hit to him, and then he comes in and talks to J Bone and and coach about it or whatever. And so <clears throat> we're we were the home team, right? Yes. Or we were either way. No, no, we were away. 
Yeah, we were. Because I think that play ended the third inning. Okay. No, so home. I'm fuzzy no, on fourth. that. I don't remember right. if we were home or visitor. Doesn't matter. Anyways, Greg goes back out for the second, and I get called in the third. First play, when I when I get into shortstop, I get a like a three chopper to my backhand. Not the diving play. is one before that. And I field it, and I probably take the longest I've ever taken on fielding a ground ball. And I throw it as hard as I can. And I think he was out by, like, half a step or whatever. And I'm like, that was just way too close. You know, I got to be careful. Um, and then, I don't know, Houston strikes out the next kid or whatever. And then, you know, that's the backhand play comes. And honestly, I don't remember much from it, except Coach Laugh pulled me aside in the dugout and said, that I almost gave him a heart attack on the first ball because I took way too long. And uh, that was just a funny moment from laugh. But, um, yeah, I mean, that was that was crazy. Didn't expect to play that game. Uh, also, something you guys didn't know is that I did not have my wrist taped or anything like that. Really? I, came in, I came in after the third inning, and I think I was up that inning. After my bat or whatever, I went up to Javon. I was like, Javon, who is our trainer? Um I said, yo, can I get some tape? Like, I feel weird without tape. And uh, he ended up giving me some tape. But Did he? Because sometimes yeah. that's, a, that's a touchy thing with J-Bone. Uh, I know. Uh, usually tape, it's, uh, but he gave it up, huh? For, for starters, but he, he gave it up for me. Um, but, no, that was probably one of the most fun games I've ever played in. And I remember <clears throat> when, when uh, Greer got that last out, Jacob ran straight in, you know, the corner infielders ran straight in, and I waited because I wanted to get on top of the dog pile. And uh, I th it, was it was right next to the mound. And so I was able to, like, jump up the mound and, you know, get a little bit higher. And so that was – yeah, it was, I mean, it was it awesome. It paid off for you, too, because we have, a like, a 25-foot mural in the uh, hitting and pitching indoor of you jumping onto the top of the pile. So well, yeah. well done on that one. Got, got a lot of TV time. Uh, all right, so let's let's now – well, since we already told the story about uh, – oh, after that game. So you make a couple big-time uh, – a couple big-time defensive plays, get a couple hits in that game, mm -hmm. and you're relatively unknown, like on the, on the national scale for college baseball at that point, just yep. because you hadn't, you hadn't played much. And mm -hmm. so um, – most people know about Gray. He's having a great bounce back sophomore year after a, after a tough uh, after after a tough freshman year. <laughs> so after the game, we're on the bus headed back, and I don't think I'm going to use this guy's name. There is another coach in our league. Um, I think that, you told me about this. I think I remember text, who it was. Texted Laugh and I in a group text message and said. Who is Anthony Servideo, and how is he not your shortstop? Um, obviously, a good compliment to you, and just mm -hmm. shows you how 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 well you played. Um, really good story. All right, here's something that you and I talked about on Facetime earlier this week or last week. Here's mm -hmm. the thing that frustrates me as this being your draft year that we're in right now. Um, I get a lot of questions from scouts. Um, and we're going to get to your sophomore year here, but I'm leading into it with this. I get a lot of questions from scouts like, what happened? How did he all of a sudden turn into a dude? And mm -hmm. what did he do offensively? Um, those kinds of questions. The reason that's frustrating for me is because we talked about your freshman year, didn't play a ton, whatever. But I think the, the, the season for you that gets lost that people don't look at is your sophomore year. So last year, um, you hit 290. You steal, you're like 24 for 26 or 24 for 25 in stolen bases. You hit a couple home runs, um, but but I thought you had, you're on base, you walk like 40 times, 35, 40 times. Your on base percentage is over 400. Um, I felt like that was when you started to really make, make a big step forward and obviously play a gold glove outfield for us, which sounds funny to say right now because obviously, you know, you're an infielder, you're going to get drafted as a shortstop, all of those things. But mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that frustrates me is people forget about how good you were um, as a sophomore. So take us through uh, the transition of uh, turning into an everyday player and okay. also, also talk a little bit about, like, how hard it was to go from right field to second base to center mm -hmm. field and kind of bounce around a little bit. Or maybe that wasn't tough for you at all. I don't know. All right. So 
after my freshman year. Um, it was tough. We lost in the regional at home, and so we, that you know that sucked. I was I was mad about that, and then went out after my freshman year. Played in the summer, played well. Um, you know, got that confidence back a little bit. Came into my sophomore year, and it was my mentality was completely different from my freshman year to my sophomore year. So freshman year, I came in wanting to be the guy right away, obviously, like like many guys, expecting to play, and then obviously get a rude awakening. Um, it's not always going to be like that as it is in your head when you, when you show up to college. Um, and so my mentality my sophomore year was I just want to be in the lineup. You know, it doesn't matter – if I play a different position or whatever, you know, or if I beat out the guy and I earn the spot, I just want to be in the lineup. You know, I want to hit, I want to help my team win. And so <clears throat> Adams and I go back and forth again. Um, we're both playing well to start the season off. Uh, and one day during batting practice, coach B came up to me. Cause like, you know, you saw, you would see me during batting practice. I'd go in the outfield, just mess around, run balls down. Sure. And uh, <clears throat> Coach B came up to me, and I think it was before the two-lane series. This is my first game in the outfield. And uh, he says, hey, if I put you in the outfield, you're going you're gonna to run under the ball and catch it? And I said, of course. Like, yeah. And so I had no idea that's what he was going to say. Completely, you know, shocked that he, that he said that. But uh, he did. And I played in the outfield, and you know, it, the transition wasn't wasn't too hard for me because of me taking some reps in BP, um, and so you know I was I was happy with it. I was happy that our team was performing at its best and uh, that we were winning some games because in the end that's the main goal, you know. Yeah, yeah, really good. That's good yeah. stuff. Um, okay, you go off. Um, let's talk personal, all right? So we're going to get to our team from this from the 2020 team here in a minute. Okay. Um, but, but let's go just strictly you personally. You go off. Um, we get beat in game three of the Super Regional last year at Arkansas. You go yep. off and, uh, and play in the Cape, all right? Mm -hmm. So the most prestigious summer collegiate baseball league that there is. And, uh, and you struggle. Uh, you struggle offensively. Um, and then come back and almost immediately talk about maybe – you don't have to get too technical on like a swing change, which you just mm -hmm. made a little adjustment with your swing. Um, but talk about kind of your mindset like you did from your freshman to your sophomore year. Talk about your mindset and what changed for you from the time you got done in the Cape in August to, um, I don't know, the fall into the spring, whether it was mm -hmm. mindset, whether it was swing – what was it that changed um, from the summer uh, to obviously you have an, an unbelievable 17 game season? Yeah, so the Cape was it was rough. You know, as the the worst performance baseball wise of my life that I had been through um, for such a long amount of time, and uh, I think the reason for it was because I was trying to do too much as a player. Um, you know, I go in there expecting to play well, you know, trying to play well because it's in front of, you know, a lot of scouts, you know, big stage. And so I think that's why I failed so much was because I was trying to do too much. It wasn't – I was trying to, like, you know, not play my game. And so summer's over. Um, I come back home for a little bit, obviously, you know, reflecting on the summer, what was going on, all this kind of stuff. And <clears throat> it was just my mindset and – Obviously, my swing, my swing changed. But uh, came into the fall, fixed my swing with you, and uh, basically gained that confidence back and um, realized that if I just go play my game, I'm going to have success. And uh, and it ended up working out for me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, now let's talk about our, our team. And I talked a couple weeks ago with TK about this. Um, and I'm going to kind of open it up and let you talk about what made what made this team so special? Because I think the easy thing um, coming into this year were that obviously the expectations for Ole Miss baseball are never low. 
but relatively mm -hmm. speaking for what they had been your freshman and your sophomore year, the, the expectations were fairly low. We lose seven of the nine guys in our lineup. Um, UNTK are the only everyday players back, although Grammy uh, was in there most of the time towards the end of the year. Um, you know, we got Doug and Gunner back, um, but they're, you know, there's just, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be super young. Mm -hmm. Tell us, um, just, I guess I'll just open it up. What made this team special, um, in your opinion? And, and, you know, if you need to name names or, or whatever, what, whatever you think it was that, that, that made this thing special. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to say, part of the reason why we were successful was because the freshmen and the young guys that everyone talked about when they came in and played, they didn't play like freshmen and I guess new faces. Um, you know, they came in with, with confidence and they were able to adjust to this level of baseball. And I think that is a huge reason why we had success. Um, like Chatagnier, Derek Diamond, uh, Ben Van Cleve, Kel Baker, like Dun uh, Dunhurst, obviously. All these guys that came in, you know, they played like they belong. And, uh, you know, that's part of the reason why we had success. And um, just the relationship we had with each other. Um, I think it was at an all-time high, even starting from August to when everyone got back until, uh, you know, season got banged. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, we we're, were closer than ever. And, we played for each other, which yeah. was – and, uh, yeah, that's why we succeeded, I thought. Yeah, and sure. obviously performing, that's the typical Yeah, it helps to win. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, but I, but I, I, would, I would agree with you. You know, it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those things where uh, when it was really fun to come to the ballpark. And not that it wasn't your freshman and sophomore year. I don't mean that at all. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, whatever that it factor is. And again, we hadn't gotten um, kicked in the gut. We hadn't lost many games. We lost one game and uh, won that series and it was against the number one team in the country. Mm -hmm. um, but it was, you're right, there was just something different about this team. Um, it's a shame, obviously, that we'll never get to see what the end was. But uh, <laughs> incredibly fun group to coach. And, I, you know, just uh, it, it was crazy from whoever the best player on our team was uh, mm -hmm. to, to whoever number 34 was, I guess, on this team, from a talent standpoint that never got in the game, yeah. it was a uh, 100% buy-in, which was which was unbelievable. Yeah, it's huge. You don't really right. get don't that. Talk about that too anymore often. Because, because we'll get emotional. Um, all right, let's move on. Uh, a couple of your teammates uh, gave me some gave me some questions. So, impose as opposed to me asking, you know, who's another player in the league that you thought was really good? Um, mm -hmm. Everyone thinks that's boring. Uh, so a couple questions. Uh, one, I don't completely understand. I, I've got, and it's and it's popped up on here too. Uh, people have asked about your door. I'm not going to go into that because I don't know if that story is appropriate or inappropriate. Um, interrupt me if you would like to explain what happened to your door. Uh, and if not, I'll just keep rolling. Okay. Um, the people who asked about the door know what happened to the door, so I don't think it's appropriate for me to say on here. Okay. Fair enough. Is that fair? Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. No, we'll we'll move forward. Uh, one of your teammates uh, asked a question uh, through text message, not on the bottom here. I don't think they wanted to know. Did you ever, um, you know, you you and Chatney after every single win, um, mm -hmm. would do the in between the legs high five right behind second base? Yep. Uh, became famous. Mm -hmm. One of your teammates asked if you ever um, felt bad that you were a full head length, uh, jumped a full head length higher than Chatagnier every single time, um, every single time that you guys did that. And so obviously the media and the photographers knew you guys were going to do that. So every time it's on video or a still picture, mm -hmm. your head is, you know, a foot higher than Chatagnier. So did you ever feel bad about that? Did you ever think about letting him jump higher than you? <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, that was honestly my goal was to jump as high as I could. I mean, I knew I could jump higher than him because he's way shorter than me and he can't really jump that high. But, uh, <clears throat> no, that was my goal, to jump as high as I could. And sometimes I would time it to where, like, 
I would jump after he would jump. And so when it was time to make that high five at the top, I was higher than him because I jumped a little bit later than him. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, another question. Wait, I have a question. Are yeah. you going to tell me who's asking these questions or not? Uh, no, I think it's more fun if I don't. Okay. Um, unless I feel like I need to. Another question. Whoever, whoever asked you that is a little soft. I'm going to just throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't seen uh, – oh, yeah, and somebody dropped in. What about TK? Obviously, that one was rough. Uh, in fact, when I saw TK do the – uh, in between the legs, uh, high five. I thought he might have blown out his Achilles. Uh, that's I didn't know. Happened. I didn't know what happened when when he did that. All I know is he slapped my head really hard. Yeah, incredibly bad. Um, okay, another another question. Uh, this coming fall, right? So, mm -hmm. assuming there is a college football season, if you had, uh, you have to look into the future. You have to predict performance. If you had one Heisman Trophy vote um, in December, would you vote for Jerry and Ely, John Rice Plumley, or you can vote for anyone else in the country if you would like? That's a tough question that you're asking me. Uh, <clears throat> definitely, I'm not going to vote for anyone in the country other than Ole Miss Rebel. So, so I'd choose to choose between the two. Of winning the Heisman, yep. I got I, I got to go with Ely. Ely's yeah. just got it. I mean, he's the best running back I've ever seen. He's fastest guy I've ever seen, faster than anyone on the the uh, Reds football team. Yep. Uh, yep. What do you think? Who would you pick? Yeah, no, I'm I'm a hundred percent on board. I think uh, I think the Heisman Trophy is a quarterback award, but <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'd go with Ely. I mean, that guy. Uh, Number one, I don't know if he's the fastest player on the football team or not because I'm not a football mm -hmm. coach and I don't know all of those guys. But I know for a fact he is the fastest guy on the baseball team. My, my man can absolutely fly. Yeah, um, agreed. And, and, I, and I noticed that each time when you and I were talking about uh, – <laughs> when you and I were talking about Ely winning the Heisman Trophy uh, – the hearts, I don't, I don't have Instagram, so I'm on Ole Misses, but the hearts on the right here, you know, like when people, I don't know if that's a favorite, but those hearts start going crazy when, uh, oh, when we started, uh, when we started talking about Ely winning the Heisman Trophy this, this fall. And are you still there? Yeah. Can you see me? Uh, no, it's all green. Oh, I now flipped I the camera. Oh, now I see yeah. the field. There you are. I flipped the camera on accident. That's my computer screen server. Solid. Solid. Sorry. Um, okay, I don't know if to believe that Plumley, his phone actually died, and if he missed that entire conversation, that's sad. But someone will have to fill him in. I uh, really, I really hope he's still on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody just asked, and I think it was a pretty good question. In inner squads, mm -hmm. in your career here, uh, who threw the hardest? What's the hardest pitch you've seen? Um. Hardest pitch I've seen came from Greer Holston. Ooh. Yeah. I don't – I think it was – I want to say it was 95 maybe. Um, yeah. I mean, I faced Parker a few times. You know, uh, he he threw hard. Um, he lost for our flamethrowers. I don't think I faced Dallas. My first really? Yeah. yeah. He was only here one year with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, guess it would be those guys. Greer, Parker. Yeah. Etheridge maybe out of the pen. He threw mm -hmm. hard for a little bit there out of the pen. Yeah, but Why I think the hardest, the hardest pitch I saw in air squads was from Greer. Ooh. Scoot asked a really good question also. Uh, in inner squads, oh. a, a harder guy to steal a base on, Cooper Johnson or Hayden Dunhurst? That is a tough question. First of all, uh, I think you steal a base off of the pitcher. Sure. But that's, just, that's just my personal opinion. Um I don't know. I've been – I've stolen off both of them, and I've been thrown out by both of them. So, it's it's a tie. I mean, they're both incredibly hard to see off of. I can't, uh, I can't say a specific guy. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's soft. Um, I think it, it, it would be – and I, I really hope Cooper Johnson is, is on here. Uh, but I think 
A, Dunhurst has a better arm than Coop and is probably a little more athletic than Coop. Mm. And so uh, I think it's much harder to steal off Dunhurst. Um, if do you think you could? Here, do you think you could? Right. No, I'm saying do you think you could? Me steal personally? Off the like yeah. as a 40 year old man? Uh, no, when maybe back in your prime. Right. I think I would have a shot against Cooper. I think I'd have no shot against No Dunhurst. shot against Dunhurst? Right. Okay. Right. Fair um. Enough. Yeah. That's. That's. that's oh, what I think. Pierce that is a really, a really good question. Did you see that one? What was it? Who's a better roommate, Max or Spears? Oh, Pierce, solid. Okay, so let me give a little background on this. Um, well, I guess I don't have to give that much background. Good, good, good question, Pierce. Uh, the 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 question was, or Ant's roommates this year were Max Chofi. And Michael Spears, who has been, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, your roommate every year in college, right? Correct. All right. Better roommate. So there's a lot of things to weigh here. Cleanliness, uh -huh. um, most fun to hang out with, maybe same taste in Netflix, funny guy. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe this is a big one, especially with these two. Uh, maybe you get a downgrade if you're super annoying. Yeah. Um, which could be. So. Go ahead. Uh, um, so, I think overall, taking everything into consideration, which is cleanliness, fun to hang out with, um, annoying. Both both of them were annoying. Uh, but with with that in consideration, I have to go with Spears because Spears keeps me more in line than Max does, especially around the house because so Spears is really O C D and everything needs to be clean and in a specific spot, you know, the way he wants it. And I learned that my freshman year and I just kinda, you know, let him do his thing and um yeah, Spears I, I gotta go with Spears. Spears keeps me in line. Solid. Um I'm not the cleanest guy in the world, so Right, that's nice, what I've heard. Nice to have the speakers help me out. And if you walk by your locker, you would understand that you're not the cleanest guy in the world. Anyway, uh, um, if another question for one of your teammates that I thought was a really, really good one. Uh, somebody asked me, Van Cleve asked me, if I think that you're going to play in the big leagues, the answer is yes. Um, and, in fact, I told – I probably not supposed to say – I told the Pittsburgh Pirates scout that today. Um, anyway, uh, okay, another really good question. If you <clears> – <throat> If you could only eat at one restaurant in Oxford for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. what restaurant right, are you choosing? Chipotle. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Okay, let's let's rephrase this question. Okay. Um, if sit down restaurant, like Chipotle, like, like not a Chipotle. I know. Yeah. Right? I mean. I, I eat Chipotle like four right. times a week. Okay, know. okay, okay. I understand. Uh, let's ask it better this way. Since you're a 21-year-old kid, um, when your parents come to town and they are paying, mm -hmm. so yes. big, to big Tony is paying. Yep. And so you guys are going to go somewhere and sit down and eat mm -hmm. in Oxford. Yep. What's your favorite place? You don't have to pay. Okay. So um, take Chipotle and Chipotle okay, I got and all that crap out of here. I understand. Right. Okay. Uh, well, obviously you can't go wrong with Grill House. Um, but my answer would be the Blind Pig. Ooh. Yeah, I love that place. I get the same thing every time, and uh, it's there's some good vibes in there. And my parents also love that place. I think we've eaten there. My parents have been to Oxford a good amount. Um, every time they come, we got to eat there at least once. Yeah. Wow. That's 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 a little bit off of the uh, normal line of thinking. Um, mm -hmm. I think really it's good. slept on too. I think many people don't really go there that much. I mean, when's the last time you were there? Do you remember? We went there for lunch. Uh, Laugh is a big lunch connoisseur, and Laugh has coached here for 127 years, and so he knows all the places. Um, and so I think we went there for lunch uh a couple times but yeah not not very often not very often uh someone did you read the the question <laughs> if Plumley and ely were hanging <laughs> off a cliff and you could only save one who would you save all right that is not a question 
Um, okay, here's the next one that one of your teammates asked. Um, which opposing ballpark um, was your favorite one to go to? So things to be considered with this. Um, fan base, like a good fan base, even if, the, even if they were getting, getting on you, like yeah. it, it was good. Uh, the ballpark itself, um, I guess you could even say where you had success, but really I'm talking about like, man, that it gets over with. The, the, man, that was a lot of fun. That was, that was a really fun series because of the crowd, because of the mm-hmm. atmosphere, because of the ballpark. Um, give me your favorite SEC ballpark, which you can't say Swayze. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading Scoot's comment before I answer this question. And uh, that was going to be my answer. I'm going to go with Arkansas. Uh, I mean, they check off every box that you just named. Fan base is unbelievable. Um, Ballpark is fun to play at. The ball flies there. Um, And just overall, you know, the the atmosphere that that park brings is, is a lot of fun. Solid choice. Hard to argue with that. Um, really good fan base. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we beat them there. La- I guess we- last year was the only year you went, but we went twice. Mm-hmm. Atmosphere in the Super was, was awesome. Yeah. And really it was good. a lot of fun when we beat them in the regular season. Yeah. Yes, that, it was. That was a good season. Um, I think the amazing thing um, – and, and and we're going to get to the to the draft here in a second, then, then we'll be done. Because I think I'm supposed to go like half hour with you, and it is 7.45 right now. 8.45 your time. You're, Why early you to bed. you're an early no. to bed guy. I mean, we could go no. all night, but I got to eat dinner. Me too. Um, but... Okay, let's get, let's get to the draft. Obviously, we've had a lot of questions on here. Uh, and I think some people that are on here, of the 200 people that are on here, uh, probably don't completely understand – how the draft works. And so let me give just the bare bones rules to to what's going on. So in baseball, you do not have to declare for the draft. Once you have been, once you have been in school at the division one level or at a four year level, uh, once you've been in school for three years or you turn 21 within a month of the draft, which would be like Rolo a couple years ago, but that obviously didn't happen with you. um, You're automatically in the draft. So if Ant got drafted, he would still have the – he doesn't have to declare for the draft. Uh, it's just the draft happens, he gets drafted, he decides I'm going to sign and go play professional baseball or uh, I'm going to come back to school. Um, just so people completely understand that. I guess I'll just open it up to you um, as to not put uh, any words in your mouth. Just take us through the process, what your thoughts are um, as we sit here on April 22nd, which is still – probably uh, a couple months away from the draft, depending on when they end up having it. Yeah. Um, been getting a few calls here and there from some teams. Um, I'm just just waiting for, you know, waiting to get some answers about when it's going to be, how many rounds it's going to be, you know, that kind of stuff. Obviously, we have a year back. And so that that plays huge for me and everyone across the, across the country. But, um, I mean – Every, I can't control it. You know, everything will work itself out the way it's supposed to be, and I'm not too worried about it um, overall because that would just provide stress f- for me and and all that good stuff. But, yeah, I mean, just, it'll take its course, and if I'm, if I'm in line with it, then good, and if not, then so be it. So be it. Like, come back to school and win the national championship. Okay. Um, <laughs> I will say this about Ant. Um, before before we get off, number one, what he just said about uh, not letting it uh, get to him, um, him more than anyone I, else I know, maybe in life, um, I can promise you he is not letting it get to him. Um, he uh, he can uh, he can stay laid back with the best of them. Um, so uh, I know this as a coach, this is always the the, the sticky part because selfishly. Um, I want you to come back to school and be our shortstop next year. Mm-hmm. But um, now that I've had a relationship with you for five years, you being committed to us and then obviously playing for us, 
Um, obviously, you know that all of us want what's best for you. And if it's time to go, uh, I hope you get drafted in the first round and get more money than you know what to do with. Um, but obviously, you know, the hard part is we got our season cut short. So um, that stinks for you. And, and, and TK, the guys who probably, um, if it's a five-round draft, have a, have a really good shot at being drafted in the, in the top five rounds. Um, and that, and that's, that's what stinks. But I will say this one stat um that i looked up today that it would be really hard for for very many college baseball players that if this is it for you and tk guys that are juniors you won over 70 percent or right at 70 percent of your college baseball game so won seven out of every 10 games and obviously you guys were both a uh a huge part of that mm-hmm. um and that has to be that has to be a pretty good feeling yeah for sure um we would always talk about that with Jacob Adams, you know, talking about how many college baseball games he's won. And so I honestly didn't really know how much I won. I knew, I mean, not just me, but we won a lot of games. Um, and that's, it's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah I'm, play, I'm playing neutral, but we got some people coming in here. Uh, whoever this Spears E6 is um, says, come on, Ant, you're my favorite player. Come back and wear the Ole Miss uniform again. So, uh, I don't know if you can favorite comments on Instagram, but there's a lot of arrows going up to that that uh, whoever that guy was. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of arrows going up to that. Looks like. So, looks like he's 12. I mean, yeah, he does. He looks super young. Uh, looks like he's never shaved in his life. I don't. Know, yeah. I don't know. I don't think he can grow hair. Probably. Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. Anyway. Uh, uh, wait, I don't need to answer John Rice's question because he keeps saying it. Um, I didn't even know John Rice was on here. Yeah, he oh. uh, he wants me to answer. Who he wants me to tell him who his favorite player is. On okay, I, I assume he's talking about on our team. Yes, okay, on our baseball it. team. Go 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 for it. The, the, the answer the, the floor is to yours. that question is Derek Diamond. And I love Derek. Great guy, great teammate. Uh, he's a giver. Um, never asks for anything in return, and I love him. Hmm. And that's what I'm going to go with. That is, uh, that's amazing. I'm, uh, I'm that that one surprised me. That's not what I, uh, that's not what I thought you said. I definitely didn't think you'd say Plumley, but I that uh, that surprised me a little bit. All right, if you had, yeah. if you had to go position player, uh, if you went, uh, if you went favorite favorite teammate position player, uh, uh, I don't know. That's a tough question. Definitely not Chatagnier. Right. Um, I got to go with uh, Kale Baker. Uh, Kale Baker and I were a lot closer than many people thought. Um, great guy. Yeah. Uh, I can I can support that Bake. Um, who if he if he's ever on here, I also have a Baker shirt. Uh-huh. Um, Baker is an outstanding teammate. I think. Uh, a, a couple guys, and, and I'm being serious here, probably don't get the – well, people just don't know. So, like, even though Plumley's on here, I'll say his name because he deserves it, which makes mm-hmm. me sick that he's on here. But uh, Plumley, Ely, Chatier, yeah. Kale Baker. So, those are four new guys to our team this year um, that had super infectious personalities that helped that thing go um, the way you're talking about. Just uh, there aren't – there aren't very many guys who can walk out and kind of slap coach B on the butt at practice and be like, Hey, we ready to roll today. Um, And those four guys have that. Um, So especially Ely. Yes. 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 Ely is uh, that guy special. That guy's special. He is the guy that uh, really, really fun to show up and, and have him singing a song all the way down the runway from the locker room. Because it echoes. It echoes. It might <laughs> be the dugout. The other dugout. And then just continue to sing it right out to practice. Yeah, um, yeah he's special. But those he's guys special. are part of the reason of what made our team so special, I think, in a way. That if you're not a part of the team, then you can't really understand. No um, question. But, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, listen, man, uh, I appreciate you coming on here. Uh, you take the yeah, record for the longest conversation with me. Uh, nice. We went we went fifty three minutes, um, and I think 
uh, held really steady around 200 people on here, most of which, uh, most of which uh, are your teammates. They asked some really good questions. I didn't get to a couple about why don't you have long-term relationships? Why don't you grow? Why do you, why is your facial hair patchy? Those were some of the other questions uh, that some of your teammates, Look at it. That some of your Look teammates it. had put in. Uh, there was another one too, and it was Chatney's, and I just can't remember what he texted me. Peyton, you on here still? Yeah, he is. Um, he said he was leaving, but I don't think he did. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, I love you. And uh, whatever happens uh, in the in the draft, you know, uh, you know, you got my support. So, mm -hmm. um, of course. But, but you always have a home here. So, you want to mm -hmm. come back and run this thing back one more time? I'm all for it. <laughs> I know you are. All, all right, right, buddy. I love you too. I'll uh, I'll talk to you later on. All right, I'll talk to you soon. All right.